Hello, Final Fantasy Randomizer community. I am Giganaut, as you can see on the layout here. Most people just call me Giga. Uh, we are here. I, I have ADR in the booth with me. Sorry. Hello. How you doing, ADR? Oh, I'm always looking forward to these races. It's going to be a lot of fun. I sure hope it is. Uh, we have Not Young Me and Krellen racing right now. They're going to be playing in Losers 2, and the winner of this race will be going on to face Sorbius in Losers 3 for the winter tournament for 2024. Uh, do you know the flags better than I do? I'm pretty sure you do. Yes, I do. Uh, what we're looking at here is uh, more or less an all-loose shard hunt game. So what that means is you've got to get out 28 shards before you can open up the chaos, and the items can appear just about anywhere. They might block progression like transportation, your ship, canoe, airship, or they might block your dungeons like the rod, the chime, the cube. Technically no one item is required except the loot and key, but to get to those 28 shards you're almost certainly going to have to make your way through two, maybe three of those fiend dungeons, possibly all four depending on how transportation works out. So, you can also get new equipment based on the fetch quest turns, like adamant, TNT, herb, crystal, etc. Mm -hmm. Which will be some end game equipment for you, as well as a tail, which you can use to promote to equip more of it. Mm -hmm. That will be guaranteed on a fetch quest. We also have the uh, stuff people normally don't talk about, like early open progression, the, uh, the northern and Bahama docks being open. Uh, Right, yeah, early pro open progression, what that does is open up a path between Canaria and the Dwarf Cave, as well as connect the river system up north of Crescent Lake. In vanilla, if you want to go to ice, you gotta park up north. If you want to go to Volcano, you gotta go into the south. With that open progression flag on, it erases some of that mountain, so you can take the canoe to hop over one to the other. And then Bahama Dock means that once you get your ship in Canal, you can go straight down to Bahamut's Island, dock your ship there, and walk in to promote, assuming you have your tail. Mm -hmm. The They also have trap chests being waited to have better treasure than normal. That is, chests that are blocked off by a trap tile, which starts up a forced encounter if you're not aware. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, what, what happens there is that the, there's going to be slightly better equipment in those boxes. So a lot of runners will go a little bit out of their way to pick those up, just because your odds are a bit better. And the runners are off. They sure are. Looks like we've got uh, nothing too important in the white magic. Lightning 3 in black magic, that's going to be a good multi-target spell for everyone. Blind and confusion, though. Uh, I don't think those are very useful. What do you think, ADR? Well, not especially, but these flags do have a few small buffs. The Power Word spells, which is Stun, Blind, and Quadettes, will uh, hit any enemy with 600 hit points or lower, and Vanilla it's only 300. And Confusion, the way that works is it makes the enemies cast fire on themselves, and in these flags, the buff level 1 magic is turned on, meaning those fire spells are going to do a lot more damage. So if you do manage to land Confuse, it's going to be a little more effective than it otherwise would be. But it's still, compared to just flowing out of Light on your own, and it's still not great. Both of our runners do find the bottle here in the north western side of Toph. And they're going to be fighting Garland probably, as people normally do, since Garland is, well, the easiest boss in the game. Especially when you have level 1 light, light three magic that's going to end that fight fast. Yeah. Uh. Why don't we talk about the blessings a little bit? We do have Fighter, Thief, Red Mage, and Black Mage on both runners. The Fighter has 25 extra agility and 20 vitality, which I believe means more health per level. That's true. Yeah, that Fighter is going to be very high hit points pretty fast. We find a bridge and canal on the Royalty in uh, Corneria. It's going to be our access to pretty much the rest of this continent. Well, I guess Corneria is a continent all itself, but 
the rest of the uh, first continent that you would normally play in uh, vanilla. So, Provoka... Uh, is there any other... I don't think there's any other uh, towns on that continent. There's Matoya. There's, uh... Yeah, that's it for now. To get to Elfland in these flags, you need either a canoe or a ship, which they don't have yet. But you're pretty much guaranteed they're going to come really soon. Right, and the early open progression we were talking about earlier, not young finding a ship, that's going to open things up even more, especially with the canal. Getting the herb as well, that's going to be uh, the elf prince being woken up and giving him a uh, fetch quest item. So, Krellin taking advantage of the uh, open progression right now. Walking off to the west, and we going towards. I think it's. This is Dwarf Cave. And these two chests are a free check. And decided to reset out of it because he doesn't need that rod yet, but knowing where it is, he can come back and get it anytime he's ready. Mm -hmm. Not Young walking into Provoka, he's gonna probably. Is he going straight for Vicky? He's going straight for Vicky. With Lightning 3, Bicky should be extremely easy. As long as the Black Mage doesn't instantly die. Absolutely. And these pirates give you pretty good gold, which you can land go over to spend on level 2 magic. That's another good reason to take these guys out first. Mm -hmm. Krellin finding the ship and herb in Matoyas as well. Not on getting the crystal. So that's a trip back to Matoya. Potentially, at least. You know, I would go in a little bit early because the Red Mage is blessed with the Legendary Sword, which means if you pick up a Vorpal or an Etzkal, both of which the Crystal and Herb and other turns could turn into, that Red Mage can equip it before even promoting. So that can be really nice early game damage. We did also find a slab in Provoka's shop. Um, what flag puts a... Sorry. What, what flag puts a key item in a shop? Yeah, that's part of randomized tre treasure. In the original game, the Oasis vendor is selling you the bottle. You bought the bottled up fairy and sells it to you for 50,000 gold. In the rando, it switches that between any random shop, and then when you randomize the rest of the treasure, that bottle might be swapped out for something else in the game. As a result, you, you end up, it's potentially one key item in a shop, or sometimes you just get a double item, like a, a cabin or a house that shows up, which is the Rando's way of telling you that there's nothing nothing worth going after in the shop this time. Got it. It does look like Not Young is going back to that to Matoyo to find out what the crystal's going to get him. Not really finding anything important in the Provoka magic shop, I think. Zap and Locker, all right. Not Young getting the power bonk for their fighter. Hello, that power gauntlet, it's great in a few different ways. First, you can equip it and it gives a decent defense. And a regular fighter can equip that before promotion. So it's some early game defense, but it's real power is that it casts a spell Saber on yourself, which gives you plus attack damage and plus hit percent. In most games, the hit percent thing doesn't really matter, but in this sense, you have the improved dark penalty on, some fiends will throw out ink at you for blind, and the power bar can help to offset the hit penalty loss from being blinded to keep you in that game. Right. I haven't seen ink or any sort of blindness be inflicted very often in this game, but uh, it is going to be very debilitating if that's the case. Yeah, and usually by end game you're sitting on a ribbon which gives you protection from low status elements. So that reduces the chance of hitting down to about 1, 1.5 percent. But it can still happen. And it's it's nice to have a, a counterplay in mind. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing the runners uh, reset out of the first encounter out of a town or a city. Uh, you know more about that than I do, don't you? They're finding oh, the tail on the elf, by the way. Oh, they're going to love to see that, because thanks to Bahamut, Doc, and Canal, they can go down and promote at their leisure now. 
the players will probably wait a little bit until they're heading that way anyway, because otherwise it's about a minute or two out of your way. But it's still really nice to have, just so the options open to you. But on that reset, what happens is, the Final Fantasy 1's random battles, there are actually a set number of steps between each fight. And the rando of course shuffles that, but as you play, you can keep count and, and get a handle on it pretty quickly. So what players will do, is they'll use saves and resets to skip some of those fights that come up a bit too quickly, so they can save a lot of time that way. And not Young Me just saw Fast, Temper, and Drac all at level 4 Black Magic. Those are all excellent spells. Right, I was reading up on how all the instant kill spells work earlier, and to my knowledge, Brack, despite being a stone poison element, it's the most effective, apparently, the most accurate of the instant kill spells. Yeah, it's got a pretty good chance to hit. I'm not sure what the number is off the top of my head. Maybe someone in chat will pop in and tell us that. But it's a decent chance, so if you flow it out five, six times, there's a good chance it'll hit. And several of the fiends, including Kraken and Tiamat, do not have elemental resistance to that. So it's it's a pretty common strategy to flow that out against those two and, and hope it hits. According to the guides on GameFAQs, uh, it's got a 64 as its value to hit. I have to wonder whether that's 64 out of 256 or 64 out of 100. I would bet it's out of 256. So that would be a quarter chance yeah. to hit. And it does subtract the enemy's magic defense from that. But it's still pretty solid odds. Definitely. Better odds than any other instant kill spell, other than Quad X, like you said earlier. That one's guaranteed if the enemy is below a certain amount of health, correct? And weak to the element? Right. If they have protection from death, Quad X is not going to work. But otherwise, it will land. And only Lich of the Fiends have protection from death. So you can Quad X carry, crack, and anti. Good to know. I normally do Mystic Quest stuff, and uh, we've been looking for a Final Fantasy 1. For someone who knows Final Fantasy 1 better than I do. Yeah, I've, I've kept my eye on the Mystic Quest Rando too, that's a fun one. Uh, developer Wildtem, who does a lot of work here on Final Fantasy 1, also created that one. So if you want to head over to ffmqrando.net, that's a, a fun one to look at too. And they're going to start doing a little Final Fantasy 1 Mystic Quest Archipelago multi-world crossover event once a month to keep you guys open for that. Right. We do have the TNT being found in the north side of Marsh here. Uh, do you know if that was a chest that was copied to the bottom of Marsh? You know, I don't know those off the top of my head. Let me pull up my, my map. But, yeah, what happens on that is the, the way the developers coded the bots is each one has an ID and memory, and a few of those are reused. So let me... It was the one on the right in the bottom left. Yeah, right. so that one is not dupli duplicated. The one to the left of it is on floor level number two. So there's four bots up there top. Two of them are duplicated on, on the other side, and two of them aren't. That TNT was in one that is not duplicated. The runner's shortly exiting Marsh just to use a house outside. Uh, that's to save the game, if I recall correctly. Yeah, and the house will also refill your magic points. And since some of these fights are unrunnable, that's why it says wait instead of run. They're right. forced to take them, and that can burn through your magic points. So if you come in with an, an empty load of magic, you can end up getting a, a costly wipe. Right, and Final Fantasy 1 uses the Vancian magic system, meaning each tier of magic has its own pool of MP, but each spell only uses one point of MP. Uh, each tier can have up to 9 points of max MP. But other than that, you're kind of screwed if you're out of MP. There's no yeah. ethers or anything in the game, is there? There's a flag to add that, but it's not turned on in these, so no. The only way to recover is going to an inn or using a house on the overworld. We do see Not Young taking a particularly strange uh, route through that room there, but that's to avoid an encounter tile, isn't it? 
there is an encounter tile, but he's just about to walk up to it. One right. of the tricks that the players will use here is if you hug the bottom side of the, the room with a door on it, there's no fights along that bottom edge. So the more uh, steps you can take on that, the better. So that's why they do it. Yeah, after you've played for a while, you just kind of get used to it and will automatically hit those as you go. But yeah, as you see, you went down and then over, hugging that right. bottom wall for as many steps as possible. Right. I didn't catch what Krellin was teaching his red page. They do have Fade at level 3. It's pretty amazing. I don't think you can teach Fade to a red mage, though, can you? Well, it depends where it lands in the rando. No. In vanilla, of course, it's level 8, which is well beyond a red mage. But here is at level 3, and two of those spells are red mage learnable, and two of them aren't. And I think Fade landed here in one of those slots that the red mage can't learn. But there's times it'll land in a slot that the red mage can learn. So whenever you, you're looking at the rando, you look at what slot it's in on the shop, and some of those are red mage or promotable red wizard learnable, and some of them are. Right. And uh, again, if you're not aware, the way to tell in the shop is is the character raising their hands. If yes, then they can use that particular item. Yeah, that's another little quality of life thing this randomizer added. The vanilla game, you can try to buy it and it'll say you can't learn that. Here it'll tell you without having to hit those extra buttons. So it's just a nice little enhancement we put in. I thought the raising their hands thing was in the vanilla game. Nope. It's... It was new to the rando. I, I think 2022 is when we put it in. It, it must be because I'm more used to the uh, later versions of the game. Yeah, the future re-release has added a whole bunch of nice things, too. Right. Krellin taking that rod back. He might be deciding to go to Earth relatively soon? Yeah, in these flags, it's very common to see Earth be required. It's a relatively early dungeon. It likes to put key items in there. And when you're... A, he's level 6 right now, which is a little bit low for Earth Dives. And when we were designing the flags, one of the specific goals was to keep the levels a bit low early game. To make things like Diving Earth a little more scary than it is in your typical flags with higher experience bonuses. Mm -hmm. uh, given the run's typical or general positions at the moment, where would you go? Right now, ADR. I, I would definitely go to Earth at this point. You got that rod in hand. You got light three that's good enough to survive. At least check out those first couple of floors and see what you pick up. You got the rod anyways. You might as well go past Vampire. If you, if you have the magic points, yeah, sure. If you run a bit low, then you might want to go back out and save. It depends how confident you're feeling about taking on some of those later fights. It's possible you can hit an unrunnable pack of wolves or anything that it's not terribly dangerous on its own, but it'll wear you down as you get deep into the dungeon. Mm -hmm. Not young finding the adamantite in the northern room in Earth 1, and the key in the southern room, the southeastern. There's more rooms to the south here. That key is a huge find. That opens up, uh, I have to do the count, something like 20-something locked chests, right? Already accessible. And of course, it is required for the end game. Mm -hmm. I'm, some parts of Topher locked behind the any key, as the tracker put, puts it. Uh, and there's just tons of locked doors all over the world. And this is the key that opens them. I don't know what that does for the uh, infrastructure of the world. It's interesting, thinking about stuff like that. You know, there must be separate keys that the characters have, but some of them, the magic key can open all of them. L like the dwarves, it doesn't make sense that they'd have a, a room in their house that they can't even get into. But, the logic of this game is, um, you, it leaves a bit to the imagination. <laughs> It 
doesn't look like there are any, uh... Well, the, the trap tiles are invisible, because they're not being shuffled at the moment. Yeah, the trap tiles in here, most of the runners will be able to avoid a good m many of them. Not your means heading up on one that's required because it's right behind the door. But quite a few others, if you know your steps, you can w actually walk around them. Mm -hmm. And the earth elemental is runnable anyways. Two katanas, I believe, yes. But they're yeah, not the equipping them instantly. I, aren't katanas equipable by any class? Nope, you're, you're thinking Lamasa. The uh. katana is normally equipable only by a promoted ninja, but since the red mage rolled legendary sword, the red mage can also equip it in the, this particular seat. Got it. The katana's big strength is its critical hit percent, which helps a lot as you get later game and have multiple hits. Early game, it's certainly still nice to have, but it's not going to be that useful compared to spamming out your magic against fights like this. Our runners do seem relatively equal with each other, with Not Young just being lower in the dungeon. Yeah, they've been making a lot of the same plays so far. They're both at student pretty well. So Not Young Me is starting to use those light two instead of the light three, and that's that, that kind of indicates a bit of magic point resource conservation. And that's why it's possible we'll see him at warp out and use a house to refill before going in and taking on Lich uh, and possibly more fights on that fourth floor. It, it's certainly possible to win that fight as it is, but it's a little bit more a little bit more of a gamble to keep going as your resources get stretched out further and further. Mm -hmm. Spells are a very important part of your damage in this game. Not just the damage spells, but also the buff spells. Which, uh, the Black Mage should have a few of them, I believe, at level 8? Unless I'm reading the buff magic, uh, blessing wrong. Oh, yeah, uh, that will give you fast and temper uh, out, of the, out of the belt. And it'll only give you two charges of those when it's a blessing like that until you get up to high level. So it's something that you might use for a boss fight, but you didn't want to hold on to until then. Gotcha. Using warp to uh, just escape the floor, but not the entire dungeon. Warp is a really versatile spell. You can use it to leave if you want, but you can also use it when you have to backtrack anyway, like in this floor. You can backtrack without taking on those extra fights. Because mm -hmm. the floor is pretty big, it's kind of a maze. Though the runners know their way around, of course. Not Young finding the loot. Loot and key are the two required items. We've seen them both in Earth. That's gonna feel pretty good to the runners because now they won't have to go hunting for them later on. It looks like they have about six shards. They'll need 28 to finish the seed. Uh, each fiend, by the way, gives two shards. Er, the Earth and Fire fiends give two shards, that is. The Water and Wind Fiends give four shards on defeat. That's right. And, and as you accumulate shards in these flags, each one gives you a 12.5% experience point bonus. So as you get them, it's going to help you level up a little more, more quickly and easily. 
Mm-hmm. So you you want to take as many as you can get. But here's that Lich fight, and Lich is punching that thief right out in one hit, and then taking some harm, some flame sword damage, and some fire, refusing to go down without a fight. Definitely beefy in the strength department. We haven't seen any of its skills, and it did go down fairly quickly. Vanilla Lich has about 400 hit points, and in these scalings, it can go up as high as about 8, if I remember correctly. But Right, it goes anywhere from, uh, I think, 110% to 200% health. Yeah. Well, that's certainly enough to give you pause, but if you're able to spam out enough magic, it, it's not going to last for long, as you just saw. That poor woman. Could have walked around her, and no one would have, no innocents would have had to die. Gotta go fast. If someone gets in the way, you get rid of them. Yeah, take him out. Krellin making it to Lich now. The his red mage is dead. Krellin's using a flag called Fun Enemy Names, and Lich is first renamed to the Speed Bump. But throwing out ink and landing dark on that fire, eh, that's that, that's gonna slow things down a bit. And he's using temper, like you mentioned earlier, to bump his uh, hit percentage back up. Oh. Temper, when cast, there only does damage. It's when you cast Saber on yourself that gives you both damage and hit percent. But like I said, when you temper up, every time you do land a hit, it's going to do more damage, and there's enough to take lift down. Right. Finding a crown in the dwarf armory. Uh, there was a ribbon, I believe, on, on yeah, the adamantite? A, a ribbon from the adamant. And ribbon is one of, well, the best armor in the game. You can say that without too much equivocation. It gives you protection from all elements. So it really neuters a lot of the enemy spells against you. Not all, but most of them. It's a better piece of armor than the ribbon in pretty much any other Final Fantasy because in other games, they just protect you against status effects. Yeah, it's a, a little bit overpowered in this game. Also, yep, there's the ribbon. Plus three. Also finding the ruby in Corneria. Ruby's going to give us access to four chests in the Titan's Tunnel. They could be good, they could be bad. We don't know yet. Not Young also checking the locked doors in Cove on the east side. As is Krellin. It just makes sense. So these two, two of these boxes are considered better trap treasure. And of course, key items can appear anywhere, as we just saw with that floater. But you can't get in the air until you have a canoe as well. So floor is nice to have, but only one piece of the puzzle. That darn canoe, where could it be? Anywhere, really, isn't it? Yeah, these flags really like to give... If you don't get a canoe early, it's probably so late in the game, by the time you get it, you're pretty much done anyway. So, just be satisfied with your ship. There's more locked doors over here. There's a shed behind the castle. I wonder if they'll go back and get the slab. Probably not for a while. Provoker's a little bit out of the way, and maybe after promotion you go there to pick up some magic anyway. 
Well, the slab is... It's gonna be a piece... Turn into a piece of equipment. That's nice to have. But you need airship to turn it in. And it's a long walk. It's probably not going to be something that they deem worth hunting down. Yeah, makes sense. I am fighting Astos now. That'll be another uh, piece of equipment. And it's nice to go up to Astos when you already have the key, because there's three locked boxes in this castle as well I can pick up. And that is an Excalibur plus five. That is an outstanding sword. Excalibur is the strongest sword in the game, isn't it? It's the second strongest by outright damage, with only the Masa Mune being the, a bit better. But it also has a slightly... It gets a it gets an elemental bonus, which will do plus 35 damage to any enemy with an elemental weakness, or a type weakness, which is almost all of them in the game. But its critical hit percent is a little bit low compared to the Katana and the Vorpal Sword. So if you're up against an enemy with no elemental weakness and a high defense stat, the Katana or the Vorpal might be able to do more damage thanks to critical hits. And that's why you often see runners pick up both and swap them out before Chaos at the end. Gotcha. And that's where the whole argument comes from, isn't it? About whether the Vorpal or the Excal is better? Yeah. Well, the Excal is such a strong sword for all but one enemy in the game. And that, that enemy being Chaos. Now there's a good chance you're just going to equip and hold on to it. Well, Krellin just went back to get last lap. He sure did. He... I wonder what other, uh, equipment there might be that... yet... Or, that's still in the pool. Uh, there is the power staff in the pool. I tried to look up what... Oh, uh, Fabian Hawk showing up in chat asking if it was a forced party. Uh, not to my knowledge. This is the regular winter tournament flags. Yeah, I believe it's just coincidence. Um, this is this is a good strong party to take in these flags. And given the blessing, that plus legendary sword on the red mage should probably tip them over in that direction. Right. Uh, fighters have increased vitality and agility. Thieves have increased and death and luck. Red mages also have free life. Black mages have buff magic and axes, but they're not going to use the axes, of course. I tried to look up what the power staff does, and all I got was nothing. In the original game, it it was an item that sold for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gold, and otherwise it was pretty unremarkable. In the rando, they added the ability to cast a spell Ruse, so when you pick up that power staff, use it as an item, it gives you plus... Uh, I think it's 40 evasion points. The end result is if you use it three times in a battle, you become pretty much invisible to enemies trying to hit you, and they will only hit you 1-2% of the time, so it really neutralizes the normal attacks. Or if they're using a spell. Correct. Right, Avian Hawk saying in chat that it's the ruse stick rather than power stick. Yeah, same thing. When, when we renamed it to add the magic, they also just put the name in, so it's not a surprise to runners who pick it up. Mm -hmm. We are seeing the level 4 shop again for black magic. Bracklock Fast Temper. Fast is a really fantastic spell. They did have it at level 8 thanks to the buff magic blessing on that black mage. But having it again at level 4 means that they can use it in, in a, more circumstances, because you're not going to run out of points so fast. Right. Having multiple tiers of magic for a single spell typically doesn't happen. It's only in the random. Yep, and only if you happen to get that blessing. Which is sometimes a curse, because it can take up spell, spell slots that you would have preferred to use with something else. I guess that's why they call them blursings. Indeed. Not young giving the ruby to the titan. Let's see what's in those boxes. Krellin finding the chime as well. Rune sword, dragon sword, shard, and shard. 
the Dragon Sword would be good if they didn't already have Excal. It might be good before they promote. Uh, is that right? Yeah, the Dragon Sword can be equipped by the Thief, which gives it a nice little bit. It has decent attack damage versus the Dragon type, which also includes Lizards and various other random enemies. And it has a, a not bad critical hit percent chance too. It's a solidly decent sword, but yeah, the Excal is better in every way. But the only one who can equip the Excal at the moment is Red Mage, I believe. Right. But since they just picked up the chime, the next stop to go is going to be the Mirage Tower, and Bahama happens to be on the way. You go straight down, which we'll see not your me doing. Pretty much you just hold straight down, you end up at Bahama. So that's almost certainly the next destination. Which is going to mean a free promotion to the... Well, every class has their own promoted class, as I'm sure everyone watching this is aware. Yeah. And in practice, it means that Sanctum Kutana will be equipped by the Ninja, the that style will be equipped by the Knight, the Red Mage will hold on to whatever, um, you can equip more armor, pick up some more spells, but it's really that Katana and that style that being equipped that we're going to see happen instantly. They did get two Katanas, so I'm assuming they'll both be used, one by the Red Wizard, one by the, red, the uh, Thief. Exactly. Yeah, the Black Mage can also equip that black shirt now, which is a, a really solid piece of armor. After you promote, you can put on those shirts on your wizards. And ninjas can equip a lot more armor than thieves, which is why we see that ice shield being shuffled around as well. I wonder why Not Young isn't giving the opal to the Black Wizard. What do you think, KDR? Well, the Black Wizard can put on that black shirt, which will do something. And I think I did see it go on the Red Wizard, but I'm not certain if it was equipped or not. Sometimes you can't tell just because frames get dropped on stream, and these runners can be so fast manuing that, that you just miss it. But. I'm not sure if that was equipped or not. I don't believe it was. I think they had better chest options for both of the characters. There is the canoe. I'd uh, love to see that. Unfortunately, I don't think we need it that much anymore? Question mark? It depends what other items are in here. Seeing that cube, you can now go all the way up to Tia and pick up shards along the way, but I still expect at the end of this dungeon they're going to come up a little bit short and have to dive at least one more thing to get that. And when you have canoe and you already have floater, you can go pick that up and go to card your treasure boxes, do a few other easy pickups before you're forced to dive into the volcano or the sea shrine. But also Not Young Me is only level 9 going through this Tide Tower. And the fight's in here with good experience points, and you're probably going to be forced to take a few of those to level up before heading up to the upper levels of this dungeon. I imagine they will. It looks like Krellin is heading down to Cardia now, as well. They're going to promote. We don't have the, uh, Bahamut's Horde flag turned on, so treasure is scattered all around Cardia, and we do need to actually go find him. With Canoe and Floater, that becomes possible. Right. So these runners are more or less following one step and step after another. Crown's doing the same thing that Young Me just did a minute ago. Almost certainly gonna head up to Mirage Tower Nets and continue following these same footsteps. 
and about the same level there to level 9. Mm -hmm. How do you think Krellin could catch up right about now? It's going to depend on what happens on the inside of this dungeon and what route they go to after picking up the floater. Or, or not the airship. Because once you pick up the airship, you got to decide whether you're going to try to go to sea, you're going to go to Tarja, you're going to go to ice, to volcano. And volcano and Tarja are probably the two easiest plays to do. So there's a good chance we'll see them both do that. But that choice very well could be a difference of a few minutes that will close this gap. It's not very big. It looks like Krellin is going to grind outside of the Mirage Tower. Going for some steak here. Yeah, that could end up being a difference too. Going in there with a slightly higher level means there's more likely chance to succeed and going all the way. Not yet me to possibly hit a nasty fight on the upper level of Sky and end up wiping back out, resetting all his progress. Krellin didn't take very long to grind out there, did he? No, just picked up one or two levels. But now seeing that cube in there, they're gonna know that going all the way up to Tia is now a possibility. Won't be surprised if it takes a couple more levels before going back in. Would make sense. Our tracker for the day, JLo, uh, has dipped out. Could be bad internet, could be extenuating circumstances, I'm not sure what happened. But I will take up the duty. Like Not Young's up to 18 shards. And Krellin just reset out of something, which it's not a big deal in Mirage because it is a short dungeon, but it is going to be a small time loss. We see Not Young Me choosing to take some of these optional fights instead of running away, and that's just going to be for the experience points. We want to pick up, I, I recommend level 14 to 18 to finish off this dungeon. Now we're at 13, so that's pretty close. Tiamat is certainly a, a possible fight to take now. Mm -hmm. So have been chat asking what's the tail of the seed so far, and more or less it's been hand in hand. They got, a, they got a rod, Earth had key, loot, went through there, picked up floater in a, a locked chest, and then picked up chime, promoted, and is now working their way up to die. And Cuban Canoe have been in Mirage. Just kind of sitting around waiting to be used. Fire is one of those encounters I like to take. They tend to be worth good experience and they're, they're usually not that hard to kill, but now Young Me is preserving resources going up ready to take on Tiamat. What were Tiamat's base stats in vanilla? Just the health, sorry. Do we Once have that on... go ahead. 
Yeah, 1,000 hit points in the vanilla game. So we're looking at between about 1,100 and 2,000 here. We do have blindness being inflicted. Unfortunate. Is that still there from previously? Did I completely miss that, or nope. was that inflicted this fight? Yeah, in, in this game, blind does not persist between battles, so it's going to be picked up again. TMS throughout looks like an ink. Two hits for 281 from the fighter. We have our ninja using Bane Sword. Tiamat does not have resistance to poison, so Bane has about a 7% chance to hit my memory is right. So it's it's worth throwing out there when you're not doing anything else. But damage just did the job, Tia is down. Another four oh, I should do my job. <laughs> Another four shards for not young. He had eighteen, that would be up to twenty-two. So just six left. At most. Krillin is still following those same footsteps. Just a couple minutes I hide now. Probably going to do one of the same thing. Pick up your boxes, take the TV down, and then, then go up and get the airship. Now we haven't seen Atail yet, so Sea Shrine is not yet on the table. So their only options are to pick up small boxes like the Cardia Isles, or go down to Ice and Volcano. Meaning the the way the seed's been going, it's really telling them where to go. There's just one option at a time, and the best option right now is going to be Volcano. Pick up a handful of boxes that can give you the necessary shards to finish off, and then carry at the bottom of Volcano is also worth two shards. We do find the root stick, and it, it really has been pretty linear, hasn't it? There will be a little bit of a split here. They could go to ice. I, Volcano is more checks, but ice is an option. It is, it is. And if you needed levels, ice is tempting to go down and fight the eye trap tile. But since Volcano all offers the Agama trap tile as well, both are pretty good for picking up a grind if you want one. And Volcano's chests are much quicker to get to. Ice, you're gonna spend a minute just getting to the first bots. In Volcano, you spend a minute, you're looking at a dozen boxes right off the bat. We have the old men who are not confused, which makes me sad. I couldn't tell whether that was 19 or 20. Either way, that's adequate levels to proceed when you have good high tier equipment, which they do have. Oh, sorry, I meant the shards, not the levels. Ah, uh, yes. It, it was close either way. Looks like 19 shards on Krellin's side. That's gonna go up soon. Uh, does it? There's only six per row, right? Yes, maybe I miscounted that. Yeah, because when I saw it, it was 14. But yeah, you're got, probably right. He got a shard or two after that.
Not young up to 25. So just five more. Carry will be two, and they need three from chests. Oh, there's only uh, three left. It's a total of 28 of these flags. Oh, my bad. I don't know why my mind defaulted to 30. We do well, have a unique strat going on here, in case anyone's not aware, with the uh, lava tiles. They deal damage to your party members on the overworld, but while they do that, you can't take encounters. Yeah, that's right. You're, you're looking at one damage per character instead of taking a fight, which both can do more damage to you and waste a whole bunch of your time. So, well, we see speedrunners almost always t take those lava tiles anytime they can. And Krellin landed a nice early kill on Tia. I wasn't sure if it was a the poison smoke or what, but Tia did not last long. We have found the Oxyhale. It's in the middle of the volcano. I believe that's the last key item, too. We know where the slab is. It's in a shop in Provoco. Right. And since the shard count is high enough, there's no need to go up to see. The next stop is going to be the Temple of Fiends. Relin making the same volcano play. That density of checks is gonna be the right the right temptation to take. Now if I was getting Go ahead. Well if I was not young me, I think I would stop opening boxes at this point. You've got everything you need, you can just go down, take uh, carry down, that's your shards and move on. Absolutely. I'm I'm not sure Not Young has realized that yet. But the level there is only 1516, so that's still a, a little bit low. Might take some of these Agrima fights just to top off. What would the normal level to fight Chaos be? In these flags about 22 will get you there. 19 if you have good equipment, which they do, and, and good magic. So I think 19 will be doable, 22 will be comfortable, and if you make it up to 24, 26, you should have a pretty easy time. Sounds good. The, the level cap in this game is about 50, isn't it? Yeah, you can go all the way to level 50. Um, some runners will do that when they have one single character that they want to bring up. But when you have the whole party, you can get away with a lot less. I did see Krellin's levels just now, and he's at level 16 across, I believe, all of his party members. Not young at around 17, 16. 16 for the fighter, 17 everyone else. Yeah, neither runner, I think, has the levels they need to finish this quite yet, but it'll come pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. They do still have the entirety of Topher to go through. Yeah, you can take fights on your way down, but it's always iffy because if something goes wrong down there, you lose those levels. And if something doesn't go wrong, you, you're using a whole bunch of resources on the way down. So they might go in, take a few fights on the, the first few floors, then come out and save. Or maybe they'll just YOLO and make it work going down. Do they not have a way out? Yeah, you can both walk out or warp out. But it's it's a question of time. You spend some time getting in there to the fight when there's other alternatives like taking those Agamers for a few fights that might have been... that might, might work out better. This is one potential divergence we'll see that, that could either grow or shrink this time gap. If it were me, 
I'm not a runner of this game, but if it were me, I would absolutely grind in the Temple of Fiends. Well, there's a lot of experience points in there. Like this Phantom. All one points right there. The, the <laughs> Phantom is... It's, it's like the developers are just trolling you. You're at Leanne, you shouldn't need experience at this point. Take one point and like it. Ah, uh, the poor Phantom. You gotta wonder whether they uh, did that on purpose or not. Oh, I think they did. But not yet me is choosing not to take any fights, just going down. No, so, this is a little bit low level, but certainly possible to do it. So not yet me's gonna give it a try and see what happens. I've seen the uh, an image going around recently of I'm, I'm sure it's a manga reference, but of of people going, nah, I'd win. I'm sure that's gotta be passing through Not Young's mind at the moment. And here we have Lich 2. Lich 2, uh, each of the second set of fiends have their scripts and their skills shuffle between each other. That's right. In the vanilla game, Lich 2 would open up with a spell of Nuke, which is a, a nasty way to force you to stop and pay attention to the Temple of Fiends. That nuke is now shuffled, it can appear on any one of those fiends, it can appear on Chaos, or it can appear on Warmech. And Warmech's nuclears are also shuffled throughout, so those tend to be the nasty surprise when you see them. Krellin just finished off carry one. That's gonna be almost hard go mode, but I believe it's still two or three left to get. It's... possible. Yeah, Krellin still has six to get, it looks like. Yep. Let's see what these Tardy Isles have. Flame Armor is really nice to see, that's good defense. One shard in that aisle. Island. Meanwhile, the at Etztail plus 5 doing work against Carry 2, not getting me down to the water floor. What would be necessary for Krellin to catch up now? Just cracking 2 doing cracking 2 things. Or these random fights here on the seafloor. These can be ugly and when they're forced to fight them, they can they can hit you hard enough or waste enough of your time that it's nice experience, but if you need experience at this point, you're oh, you're, you're gambling on what happens next. Not yet me is just gonna keep going, hope that cracking two goes down as easily as carry two did. But Kraken 2 has a way of equalizing runners. We are here. I'm sure Krello picked up the Oxio. And then missing a few of those other boxes that not yet we got, Krello's now going down to Mermaids to pick up the rest of the well not necessarily Mermaids, Sea Shrine to pick up the rest of those shards. Might just beeline straight to Kraken 1 and get the 4 shard. It down does there. look like that's what Krellin's doing. Not Young making it to Tia 2. Will their strategy hold up? Tia 2's hitting pretty hard. That was about one third of that knight's hit points in one shot. Not yet me using the white shirt, plus evasion to all party members. Oh and no. T 
Tia just threw out Zap, that time elemental instant kill targets everybody. Followed by Nuke, that, that's the endless dive. And that right there is what we call Toe for the Great Equalizer. Something like that can come out of nowhere and bye bye your run. One did just get a huge boost just by virtue of not young having to redo the entire Temple of Fiends revisited. Yeah, Temple of Fiends, if everything goes well, you can finish it in oh, about six minutes. When things don't go well and you take a, a deep wipe like that, that's plus five minutes to your opponent. So every time you dive in and you fail, that gives them pretty much a, a full dungeon worth of time to catch up on you. And Krellin did pick up a hand, it looks like just one or two levels on the walk down C, but is now facing Kraken 1. He's definitely going to be in a better spot than Not Young once he gets to Topher. And I'm sure Krellin will make it to Topher very soon. Kraken's not going to be that big of a deal. Crack broken into pieces, that's the end of Crack 1. Commentator's blessing? <laughs> now what Krillin could do here is take a few levels before going into the Temple of Fiends and make the odds of a first dive success that much higher. At this point, it's possible he feels behind and feels like he gotta go fast, but sometimes when you're behind, what you want to do is get better prepared than your opponent. Because if you're behind and Temple of Fiends is easy, then you've lost anyway. If you're behind and it's hard, being prepared gives you that chance to come back and, and win the race after all. I believe the, the venture down into Matoya's area just embodies that entire philosophy. Indeed, picking up the last of those key items, that's part of preparation. So now it's over to Toph. And then to Topher, because same place, different time. La going for a level grind. So yeah, Krellin's taking the, the philosophy of let's spend a little extra time, get better prepared. Let, that's depending on what happens not you on me. That Tia 2 zap, that's a little bit of bad luck that it that it landed, but there's only one ribbon, so you can't get full protection against that. And then that nuke, the only defense against nuke is having a lot of hit points. And so there's a pretty good chance that the same thing's gonna happen this dive as last dive and Krellin being better prepared it could very well make the difference this race is still on folks we have no idea who's going to win in fact we don't even know who's ahead technically at least not young is physically further ahead but Krellin has the advantage in levels And that advantage might make all the difference. Indeed. Level 20 is... That's a little more comfortable. Like I said, I like to be about 22 if I want to feel well prepared to take this dive. Some, some players prefer to go a little bit higher too. Well, I'm looking for something in his inventory. The mage staff. Now yeah, these metal slimes are weak to fire, and mage staff ca cast fire too. So if you can slow that out, it's gonna do pretty good damage. I see. And it's better than doing nothing anyway. Much better.
Cracking 2 showing Poison Touch on that night. And still doing pretty solid damage, but that style doing really good damage right back. Two hits, 16 damage by the Red Wizard, terminates Cracking 2. Now onto that Gatekeeper Tia 2. Up to level 21. I'm thinking Krellen might want to start heading down pretty soon. He'll get the rest of his levels on the way down, won't he? Yeah, but having them early means that you can go in with a full charge. So, if you're gonna take the fights anyway, taking them early and then recovering your hit points and magic points, that's certainly, uh, it can go either way. I would expect Krellin to leave and use a house first. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, leaving out, uh, Matt's out, and then probably attempt to dive. And, with what we know about this seed, the one hour mark, you, you might feel a bit behind, but with them, one hour is a, it, it's a pretty good time. So they might feel like it's, it, it's just time to go down and see what happens, not knowing what the other player knows. Not Young is down another two characters. That Tia 2 is gonna pay, make you pay a toll to get past that little corridor. Now the question is what does, what does Chaos have to offer? I'm swapping some items around in his inventory because each character can only use the items that they have, the equipment rather, that they have in their inventory. They can't use anyone else's to cast uh, item spells. Uh, Savian Hawk asking, is there a better sword than Yet Style plus 5? There's a Vin Katana neutral on the Red Wizard and the Ninja, but they're both laying down. And the Vorpal would have been in the Fane, which they did not take the walk up to, to go get. So, no, there is not a better sword for that knight. Speaking of, the knights in a race. A race where the timer is his own health. Ooh, Chaos is spell happy. Picked up a nuke and a couple nuclears. And a miss menu there, wasting a heal pot. Oh, this is... this is dicey. Extremely dicey. That style swings 466 damage. It's gonna take a few of those, and if that spell comes around again for another nuke, that's the end. It's a race against time now. Five sixteen. That's another wipe. Yikes. Krellin's Black Mage goes down to speed bump 2. Everyone else gets up to level 23. That Red Wizard has a total of 6 life charges, so a Black Mage going down, that's not a big deal. You can pick him right back up. The Black Mage doesn't have much of a role other than buffing people, does it? Do they? Correct. Yeah, fast is a... It's a great spell. It doubles your damage output of a melee character. So that's the Black Mage's number one job in most of these Topher fights. Put fast on your knight or maybe your ninja. And then if you have time, temper. And if you don't, they've done their job. Move on. They can take a nap. It's okay. So it's that chaos killing not Yanmi's knight. The lead has officially swapped. Krellin is in the lead for the first time in quite some time in this seed. I think since extremely early in the race. But I can switch again when, when we see how Tia 2 and Chaos reacts. So let's keep our eyes on this. 1309 damage to, to carry to. 
Bye bye. That was a home run. It kind of just crumpled Carrie into a ball and hit for the fences. Yep. So taking those, they, they did a hard reset and burned a couple encounters going down. This Dershard Bidai fight is unrunnable, and since they keep doing that hard reset, they're gonna keep encountering it on the way down, but it's certainly takeable, it's predictable. We'll probably see them continue to do that upon subsequent dives. Gotta get everyone as topped up as physically possible. Now, Krellin opting to put the knight in position 1. The knight has quite a bit more absorb and can just take Kerry's punches, or er, Kraken's punches. But the ninja has more natural evasion. So, which one you put in the top slot, we can go either way, and since the knight survived that punch, looks like this is paying off. Locke has been modded to always uh, hit the opponent. If what does that do, ADR? Do you know? Yeah, lock reduces their evasion. So if you have someone that you're not landing a lot of hits on, you throw out lock a few times and you will no longer miss. I believe it's lock three times and then anything in the game will have zero evasion? Something like that. I usually just spam it out until the hits start looking good to me. <laughs> Helen's first look at Tiamat too. Tia there, that Katana only did one hit, one damage. But Lenliette's Tal did quite a bit more, but Tia's got decent evasion and decent defense. Right. I hits 180. And was that 2,000? No, just 200. Okay. And there's oh, the no. Zap taking the Knight. Ooh, and the Red Wizard. That That is bad news. If this ninja can't do the job alone, this dive is over. The ninja doesn't have 20. any way to... Sorry. The ninja doesn't have any way to revive people, does he? Nope. He really is alone. Now, of course, Krellin doesn't know what Chaos has in store, so we're going to see that dive continue, reshuffling the equipment to give that ninja the best chance possible, but knowing what we know about Chaos's spell script, including Nuke, that ninja is going to one hit probably survive, two hits probably not. Uh... I remember hearing about a crit loop with slot 3 in the party. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, the, the odds of that making a big difference are a little bit low, but when you've got no other option, yeah, it, the way the game advances the RNG table in battle, there's certain slots that you can get a little bit lucky in. And I'm not sure how much of it is superstition versus reality, but it's not going to help when Chaos throws out a new kind you like that. So Krellin is, is back to the beginning of the Temple of Fiends. And grinding a bit more. Whereas Not Young simply believes. And to be perfectly honest, I can get behind a mindset like that. You know, I know how it feels when you're playing, that you, you've done these dives, you must feel so far behind, you know your opponent's going to be right behind you. But there's a, a certain time too when you've got to step back and realize that you can roll a dice, and there's a chance that you're going to roll that natural 20 and make your way through it. But there's a 95% chance that you're not going to. And you, you, you've got to be able to adjust your strategy 
at some point to, to account for that. And that young Mi's dad will be starting to think about that. And getting in the airship, yeah, he's, he's adjusting strategy right now. Absolutely. I do agree that simply diving Topher over and over again without any change in strategy, any change in uh, level, it's just not going to work. But it's more the mentality that I can get behind than the uh, practicality of it. Not young picking the slab up. Did Krellen ever get the slab translated? I don't recall. I, I believe he did, but never bothered going up to the fane to turn it in. So slab's a, a three-step thing. You pick it up, you translate it, you turn it in at the fane. And they know that that's just a Vorpal. Not young me is now looking at that Vorpal saying, you know, maybe, maybe that's going to help me against that nasty chaos. But Krellen right now is still looking at the level option, taking some of these fights. To be perfectly honest, what what are their other options here? They've got levels, they've got equipment. What else? Well, those are your two big ones. Sometimes picking up additional spells on your promoted characters can, can make a difference too. But we saw life was, I believe, level 5, so that's outside of the range for the knight. We didn't see care for or life 2 in knight learnable range either. Um, we can pick up fast and temper on the ninja. That's what not your me's doing. That's going to be a little bit helpful. But I, I think it's going to come down to just taking some levels at this point, because the other options aren't especially great. Gotta agree. We have Not Young also going down to Lafayne because I believe the Superstore is just on all the time? I don't think I saw a, uh, a flag for it. No, no, there is a flag and it is turned off in these. So he's going down to pick up that last slab turn in, which is gonna be the Vorpal Sword, hoping it rolled up. Gotcha. It's minus one. Ooh, that is disappointing to see. Not That's... even gonna bother picking it up, just to reset out. That is rude. I'm... is... do you think Nyan would be panicking right now? I, I, I'm pretty sure his heart's gonna be pounding at least a little bit, saying, you know, I've tried this a few times, I've, I've just slammed into that wall. What am I going to do? And, yeah, that reset there, you, you can... The, the gears in his mind will be turning. I'm going to try getting levels. Am I going to try a desert grind? Am I going to go to the, the eye and the ice cave? The Agamas? And that young me is going up to, to the sky floor, interestingly enough. Saving Hawk and chat. Time. Oh, just uh, suggesting the blue dragon trap tile. Yeah, that's certainly a decent choice. Or the war mech up here. That would be a lot of experience points as well. But it's a long enough walk that war mech, it's a lot of points, but uh, experience per time, and it's only one fight. We'll, we'll see what happens. May as well do a toe for grind, he says. And honestly, maybe Nox's not wrong. Yeah, Krellen's picking up pretty good experience points on this Tofu grind. You know, not on me did skip a few boxes in here, maybe going back to see if there's a, a Masa hidden up here as well. But no, skipping all that and just going straight for... Is it the Warmark or is it the Bridge of Destiny? We'll see soon.
Well, back there, quoting Bender from Futurama. I missed the end of it. Bite my shiny metal, you know what. <laughs> I thought they would have changed it to keep it PG. Oh, it's all in good fun. No, oh, the ribbon is still on that red wizard on Not Your Me side, which is why that Ice 2 did so much damage to everyone else. You understand that when you're walking down to a place, there's a red wizard can revive and no one else can. But when you go into the fight itself, it's usually a, a good idea to swap that ribbon over to your damage dealer to make sure that he's gonna sta stay standing the whole fight. No big trouble, all 32,000 experience points, instant level 22. But Krellen is already finished grinding and is down working way through the Temple of Fiends revisited now. It's gonna take another wipe on Krellen's side to get not yet me back in this race. And seeing these levels are pretty strong, I think the odds of Krellen succeeding are, are high this time. But you never know till you know. We will see. Making it down to the sea floor now. Well, the water floor. And that Dirt Shark Bear Die at the same place every dive thanks to them hard resetting. It, it does make this part of the dive a little more predictable. Mobs do still have a randomized amount of uh, both sharks and eyes, don't they? Yeah, it does. Fabian in chat, absolutely correct. The ninja is getting more swings because they are a higher level. I don't know the thresholds for that, though. Do you? It's any time your hit percent goes by a multiple of 32, so I tend to just check the status screen myself. Um, I don't know what the, the actual number is without checking the screen, though. Uh, level ups in Final Fantasy 1 are randomized, so nobody can tell. Well, the hit percent gain you get is based on your, your class, so a ninja will always get... In these flags, I think it's 4 points per level. So if you look at your status and you see that you're at 129, for example, you, you just got the 128 multiple of 32, so that gives you a hit. And then you would have to take another... Eight levels. Yeah, eight levels to, to get to the next one. It certainly does help make up for the Noodle Arms pickles. Crown's red, red wizard there just used wall. That makes up for the. It's the same effect as ribbon protection to all elements. That, that's a good play. Getting your defense ready to go. That zap comes out. Now you're gonna survive. Most likely. Most likely. Even with protection, there's about a, a one, one and a half percent chance that the spell will, will go through it anyway. We, we call that 3 256 because there's a. It's like rolling the natural 20, that's an automatic hit, even if you have protection. Ellen's got a significant chance here. 
Indeed. And Not Young Me is not far behind. So if anything goes wrong for Krellin, Not Young Me is in a position to retake the lead. Very two. Chaos. Move the knight to the third position. And of course, that knight needs the ribbon. Yes. Following what you were saying earlier, taking it on the on the red mage when going down all, all the way. It's a good idea, but for the fight itself, the knight needs that that protection. And Chaos throws out that zap, bye bye ninja, bye bye red mage. So it is all landing on that night now. The ninja and red mage being exiled to the fourth dimension. Which would be time. And that is why zap is time elemental. 1500 damage, wow. 1503. What are the ranges for chaos again? Between about 2200 and 4400. But that's it, GG's Krellin. That is certainly it. Krellin winning the race with a race time .gg time of 1 hour 23 minutes and 46 seconds. Thank you, Dark Moon. Yeah. They're both joining us here in chat, Krell and not on me. GG's both of you. GG. When Zap wants you dead, Zap will kill you. Oh my gosh, that was uh, that was brutal. Uh, GG, Krell. Oh, yeah, I don't know what you hit, but I mean, I walked in and Lich nuked me. Then I got zapped. Then Chaos had Zap and nuke. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't know, I've probably done 30 practice seeds maybe over the last, what, two months? And I've never seen a Topher like that. Yeah, that was fun. Who was in Topher first? I felt like I was going pretty quick, but I felt like I was behind Not Young Me because he's he's fast. He's too fast. All I kept thinking it was, I, I gotta catch up, I gotta catch up. Yeah, Not Young Me hit Topher a, a little bit under the hour mark. So Jeez. it was but also on, I think, level 18. So it was one of those dives where if all goes right, you're going to win. But if anything goes wrong and things just kept going wrong, let that, that give you the chance to catch up. Yeah, that was that was intense. That was super intense. I, I knew I was going to be behind. Uh, I think I hit it around, what, 106, 107? I don't even remember when. That I just like power grinded until I felt like I wasn't going to die. And then that wasn't enough. And I had to power grind again. Yeah, I uh, I wiped three times and then decided, okay, it's time to uh, to go do a little grind. Uh, I thought about doing a Topher grind, um, but when I went to go check for a ribbon, translating the slab to see if there was an extra ribbon there, I was already next to uh, the sky, so I said, screw it, let's just go up here. We can fight some battles and take off Warmack. But I think the, the correct play was what you did and, and did the Topher grind. I only found one ribbon. And I, yeah. I had, I just hot swapped it around whenever yeah. I on the last at the last week because that was that was brutal. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I think that seed was actually very straightforward. That was, uh, you know, there wasn't too much um, deviation. I, I don't know. I, I'll have to watch it back, but it seemed pretty linear to me. It um, was extremely linear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. It's just... Go ahead. Yeah, you were definitely faster than me. Uh, I, I'm not sure when I went into Topher, but I, just, I felt behind, and I, I knew my levels were just way too low. Yeah, I think I was in there like right around like the 56, 57 mark, um, and so I was feeling okay about that. Um, but uh, yeah, I knew my levels were low, but the massive plus five defense, ruse, you know, a ribbon. Uh, I didn't have nuke, but I had plenty of fast and temper charges. I feel like, you know, all it takes is getting to. Uh, I could have even one manned it, and I, I thought it would have been fine. But yeah, that uh, that zap ripped through me um, all three times, and then the fourth time I, I got to chaos and just got murked. Yeah, I got 
my guys up to like level I think 27 by the time 27 28 by the time I got to chaos just because nice. I, I just felt like I needed levels I yeah. needed levels I needed to resist I knew the zaps were coming yep. uh, I got the wall uh, walls up I did everything I could to protect myself uh, my second dive Tiamat decided not to zap me and I'm like okay I did all that buffing for nothing Okay, so I thought maybe I missed that, but that was the one thing I, I saw on your end. I was like, wait, did I not run the right seed? Because first turn zap came out every single time against me. So when I saw your no zap come out, I'm like, oh, shoot, like, what is oh, going on? <laughs> oh, no, it got me. It absolutely just train wrecked right over me. But then I, I got a, uh, uh, I got a, uh, a turn order, and then Tiamat did a couple swings, and I managed to avoid the zap. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, well, GG's. Well done. Uh, sorry, we're monopolizing this. We're just both kind of commiserating here. <laughs> no, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was brutal. I mean, seriously, that was the worst over that I've uh, ever ran on, on this uh, on this date. Normally, yes, 18 is low, but you, you can get away with it. You know, there's plenty of buff uh, swords, and that x cal was just filthy. So I thought, uh, <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I had a good chance. I was wrong. Where was the moss? I never even saw the chest. Oh, I never, I never saw that. I did see Warmack in uh, Mirage, and I went back and got him. But yeah, I never saw that. Ah, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe one of the viewers will go and run that, uh, run that seed. Not that I recommend it. Uh, go find it for it. And and any other ribbon. <laughs> what ribbons? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see no stinking ribbons. Yeah. Well, I'm I, sure they were. <laughs> Normally, I'm upset with losing. I'm actually more upset that you didn't um, win faster, so I didn't have to do four dives. So I'm a little upset with you for not finishing quicker. I know, <laughs> it's right? It's me out of my misery. Uh, I, I just kept second-guessing myself. And I'm like, okay, what is he going to do? And I'll, let me try and do something slightly different. Like, what if this is... Like, I did a... Uh, like, when we got the key, I went and I dove into Marsh just to make sure there was nothing there. I was like, maybe the canoe is there. He won't go for it. Because during uh, the prelims, there was yeah, there was one seed where everybody had to go delve back into Marsh. And I was like, I don't want to have to come back. Well, I'll tell you what, my, my first two tournament games, the first tournament game I lost because of that, because I last locationed um, March, uh, Marsh Key Locked. So the next game, I said, once you get key, you're going to Marsh. I don't care if you've got everything. Just go and check. Even if you have all the shards, key, and loot, you're going down there. Um, so I did in the second game as well. In this third one, I was like, I'm not going to get screwed. So I went I went there as well. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see, or I'm looking forward to see how much faster you were than me because I felt like I was behind, like, for most of it. Uh, but I, I, I felt like if you weren't done, and since you weren't, hadn't beaten me, there's got to be something nasty. I need a few levels. Would you mind if I give you a bit of a spoiler? Sure. Most of the race, it did look like physically you were behind and taking the exact same steps. Dang. <laughs> That'll be it was that, that, that's all no until time. it was all until uh, not young. Got that first wife in Toph, and finally, finally, you had gotten a chance. They don't call it the great equalizer for nothing, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that was brutal. That, that was pure luck. I, I I should have lost that. That was absolutely... If that had been even like 5% less brutal, uh, Not Young Me would have just destroyed me. I don't know. You're you're a great racer. Um, and, uh, I, that was a lot of luck. <laughs> that was a lot I about of that. luck. I, I I took a pretty big gamble going in so low, but uh, you're a great racer, uh, gents. I actually I got to take off. I'm walking into a grocery store right now. Krellen, um, GG, uh, great race. Uh, thank you so much for doing comms last minute for us, guys. Uh, ADR, Giga, Dark Moon, I appreciate you guys uh, the help and uh, anyone watching on the stream. Uh, appreciate the fans. No problem. Have a good day. I really appreciate it. We are so sorry that we're behind in last minute. Dark Moon, I am so sorry. <laughs> that won't happen again. Thank you guys for being here. It, it is really, really appreciated. Well, one thing I do want to say, uh, 
Yeah, you, it was a little bit of luck that got you there, but taking the time to prepare for Topher, that's a smart play, and if you didn't do that, even all, it, would, it would have taken a lot more luck than you would. So give yourself a little bit of credit on that. I think that I think that's why you won. Yeah, if neither of you had grinded, you might still be going. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> Just be zapped to death. Jeez. Uh, you got, got any thoughts about the uh, the seed before Topher? Uh, um, it was really straightforward. I actually was enjoying it. I'm like, well, from here to there, it, it, it felt really smooth. I just felt like I was being inefficient, uh, and I still have to work on that. I'm still relatively new. I, I'm still I go from the, the the duckling to the platypus, and I still think I'm a platypus. I I, I haven't done terribly too many tournaments. Is uh, that what they're calling it? Platypus? I think I'm pretty sure that's right. I could be wrong. We could be porky. Oh yeah. Wrong. Ducklings promote into platypus and then you stay there until you become a champion. There you go. There you go. Yeah, it, it, this this tournament's been really fun. I really, really, really love these flag sets. I've been just grinding them whenever I can. Uh the last couple of days this week has been really, really, really busy. Uh so I appreciate everyone coming here. Once again, last minute showing up. Everyone in comms, chats, the uh, thank you for letting us use the room, everybody. Mm -hmm. Glad to have you here. I think that's going to be it for us. Uh, any closing thoughts, ADR? Well, I just want to remind everyone watching that if you like what you saw and you want to see some more, or you want to give the the game a try yourself come on over to finalfantasyrandomizer.com where you can try out the rando and you can join the discord from there where you come on you can join the duckling program which is a new player training program 